Hi, I'm Jadi, and let's continue LP. We are going to speak about managing file permissions or accesses and ownership. Very, very important subject in the Linux world. And especially if you are a system admin, you will see this a lot. And not sure about you, but I have screwed up a lot. Candidate should be able to control file access through the proper use, proper use of permissions and ownerships. We do lots of bad things here while we are there. Be brave, but not on your develop on your production system. You should know about managing access, use access mode slash SUID, sticky note, know how to change the file creation mask. Okay, use the group field to grant file access to group members. We will learn about CH mode, UMAX. CH own and CH group and a few more. But first things first, let's understand users and groups in the Unix or Linux world. This is a very important concept. You will see it a lot, you will use it a lot, and you will lose data a lot. Hopefully not. If you listen, good, and don't think too while you don't understand. Uh, users and groups are one of the main methods that the Linux systems do their security. You have a user, for example, it's Jody, and you have some groups. That might be admin, can do admin tax, tasks, CD-ROM, can access CD-ROM, Tor, it can use Tor, or NetDev. If sudo can run commands with sudo, these are groups and you have one user. Your user can be a member of some of these groups. Also, in many distros, as soon as you create a user like Jody, it creates a group called Jody and it, you become a member of the same group. Uh, with the commands like who am I, groups, and ID, you can check these stuff up. I'm on an Ubuntu machine. I will do with who am I. It says, okay, you are Jot. Not very informative. I prefer to run groups. It will show me which groups I'm a member of. I'm a member of CD-ROM, ADM, sudo, deep, plug dev, LXD, and Jot. What we always use is ID. This will show me that my user ID is 1000, equivalent to Jody. This is the main important thing. This is just the name. My group ID is 1000, it's Jody. As I told you in many distros, as soon as you create a user, the distro will create a group with the same name and you will be the mem a member of this group. This will be your primary group. But I also have lots of other groups too. I'm part of a Jody, ADM, CD-ROM. Maybe CD-ROM do have access to dev CD-ROM. We can check. sudo deep plug dev and LXD. My accesses are known via these groups and what I'm a member of. So let's change to root. I give my own password. Now I'm root. Who am I? Your root. My groups, only root. My ID, smaller. My user ID is zero. In many cases, this is hard coded even. And whenever you are zero, you are root. Your group ID is root, and your groups are, all, are, are only root because on a Unix machine, root do have access to everything. You don't need to make root a member of CD ROM, is the god of the system so this is how with who am i groups and id you can check your users and groups and as you saw the zero uid and guid is for root users these are saved in etc pass wd and etc groups if i say etc pass wd it will show me all users for example this is jody Password is masked in etc shadow. This is my user ID, my main group ID. My name is Jody. This is my home and this is my uh, 
shell whenever I like. If you check the same thing in the cat etc group, you will see that okay, there is a Jody group. 1000 the code is 1000 but also there is a plug dev group this is the id of the group and jody is a member sudo jody is a member so this is how you can see where which groups i'm a member of but technically we never go here technically it's like this technically you use id or you use groups or you use commands to add people to the groups to change their groups and these kind of stuff. You never edit these files manually. Let's go back and become Jati. This is how groups and users work. But let's speak about one, uh, another important aspect in Linux security, which is file ownership and permissions. This with users and group make the Linux secure. Whenever we did an ls-ltrh, you saw different data. We have spoken about most of them, but now I'm going to describe this part. First things first, this is my user. This is this files user, sorry. And this is the group. This is in my home, so all the files belongs to me. And the files belongs to group Jati. We can change this later and different places might have different configurations. For example, on some systems, all the files belong to Jati and belong to the users group, for example. But now on an Ubuntu machine, I'm the owner of all the files I've created. This is a sample file. The owner is Jati. The main group which this file belongs to is group Jati. But we also have this funky thing here. This tells the system who has access to do what on this file. But it's very easy to read. These are the combinations of three parts. One, two, three. Each three character. The first one, when you have a directory like this, or like this, the first one is D, otherwise it's just a uh, dash. And then you have the groups of three, 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 three. This says who, what access or permissions the user has. This tells to the system which access or permissions the group has on this file. And the last one says, other people. So if you are a bypasser and you are not a member of the Jadi group and you are not a you are not Jadi, this will be your access to this file. And as you can see, it contains RWX. RWX for the user. So Jadi has read, write, and execute access on this file. In this case, this is a directory. When you have executable access to the directory, it means you can enter the directory. And another case, this one. This is an ordinary file. Blah, blah, blah. PHP. The user, Jadi, has read, write. No execution. Whoever is a member of the Jadi group do have read. No write, no execution. And all other users do have a read access on this specific file. This is how Linux on a very, very basic level managed access to different things. It's all the same thing. I've described it here. And now you know how they work. I described bits here. And that's it. For example, I've used another sample here ls l uh, user bin or bin f disk which f disk user sp ls l user sp f disk it says okay on the f disk executable which you are familiar with it's not a directory so a dash these three are what 
root user can do to this file. Root user can read, write, and execute. Cool. Whoever is a member of the root group can read and execute. And all other users, including poor Jody, who is not a root and who is not a member of a root group, can read and execute it. Please note, FDisk will understand that the user who is running it is does have enough access to write on the disk or not. But on a lower level, Jody can execute this. But FDisk will prevent Jody without enough access to do changes or modifications on the disk. So that's it. Also, I'm checking some directory here. You know, here is the home of all the users. So if I do a Ah, I checked inside Jetty. If I do LSL on home, it says it's a directory. Jody can read this directory, can write into this directory, and can go inside this directory. Execute on directories means entering. Other users, sorry. Whoever is a member of the Jody group, if I have a friend and I add her to my group, she can read this directory and enter this directory, but cannot create files inside this directory. And all other users cannot even read, write, or execute, which means uh, enter this directory. So this is how file permissions, file ownership and permissions work in the Linux world. Combine these two with each other and you can do lots of stuff. You can create a directory, give it to one specific group, give write access to that group and add whoever you want to be able to write in that group there. This is how it works. On the next section, I will show you how we can modify these accesses change the ownership part of, of the files and do some funny, tricky stuff. One of them is what hackers 